How's it going everybody? My name is Kyle and I'm with Nelly Security and today we're going to be checking out the new Uniview uh, recorders on their web interface. So I went ahead and got a 8-channel uh, NVR hooked up to our test bench and I just went ahead and got a couple of cameras that uh, I'm still checking out. So first we have a, a 5 megapixel fisheye and then a 5 megapixel indoor PTZ. I'm just hooking it up, see how everything works. I'm still learning myself, but I got it on the network, so let's check it out on the computer. So I got the IP address pulled up on Internet Explorer, and the as soon as you type it in and hit enter, you'll get the login screen. By default, the Uniview products have a username of admin and then the password of 123456. However, I got prompted to change the password after signing in already. So I went ahead and changed it to a tech password that we use daily. So I'm going to go ahead and hit log in. And as soon as you log in, you'll see a live view page. Um, it, you get something similar to most uh, surveillance products. As soon as you log in on a web interface, you'll get a, a live view page. And I went ahead and already added the cameras um, to this recorder. So if you hit play down at the bottom left, um, you'll see the cameras. Uh, top left, that's our fisheye top middle that's our PTZ which is great because over on the far right side you'll have a little arrow to bring a little pop-up menu and from there you can actually control the PTZ which this little thing I'm sure we'll do a, an in-depth review on it but it is super neat I'm really excited to see how well that this thing sells and then of course on the bottom menu or bottom middle we have our uh, NSC DB2 video doorbell. Uh, we're just checking for compatibility, and this thing adds like a champ. It, it's super quick and snappy on the, the Uniview recorders, which is great. And like with most um, web interfaces, down in the bottom right, you'll get a few options. You, have, you can take a snapshot, record a video, digital zoom. Uh, it looks like there's control panel, control your uh, fisheye. If you have audio on the camera, you can adjust the audio, two-way audio, and 3D um, positioning. And then of course you can do a full screen option as well. And then a little bit better look at the PTZ controls, call presets, do the control, focus to zoom. And then there's another tab, it's the image tab. It looks like it controls the brightness and uh, image settings on the camera, which that, that's a pretty neat little feature to have. Let's move over to the playback tab. Um, I'm still learning this myself, so bear with me. We're, we're all kind of learning together here. Um, luckily, it's pretty similar to the H-Series line that we carry. So over on the left side, you get your device list. Um, so if we were to say, for an example, select camera one, then the timeline gets populated. You can see there's event recordings as well as continuous. Um, so that's definitely great. You don't have to scrub through footage the entire time. You can click exactly where an event happens. Um, then you also you, you get the calendar to select the day, and you can see where um, what day has recordings or not. So it, it's pretty similar to our H series line, which is great. You don't have to learn too much. There's not much of a learning curve. Um, let's see. There is a. Let's go ahead and hit play here. All right, so it looks like this is our fisheye camera. And we can stop, rewind, change the playback speed, jump a certain 30 seconds, rewind by frame, forward by frame, and then take a snapshot, start clipping, save, open control panel, digital zoom, add customized tag. All right, and then let's see what is this over here. Oh, since this is a fisheye. Oh, wow. I did not know this was a thing. So it looks like you can actually go through the fisheye settings during playback, which this is crazy. I did not know this was a thing. So Uniview definitely has a step up on their fisheye playback compared to hike vision so that was the the playback tab i'm definitely a little shocked there um, but let's move on to the setup tab we'll start at the very top so the very top says client and it looks like you can um, show the default of whenever you very first pull up the live view um, it pulls up the substream first and then 
all the scaling, how big the file size are that you export, live stream protocol, much like the local tab um, on the H series line. So that's very similar too. And then next on the list is the system tab. Um, you can see the model number, firmware version, all that good stuff. Yeah, stuff you want to relay to the text if anything goes wrong with it. Next is the preview. Looks like you can do the layout of the HDMI or VGA interface, which this is super nice to have. I know H-Series just started doing this on the new uh, 4.0 interface for the, the web. So Uniview is definitely doing a good job so far. Um, so we're on the time tab. And of course you can set your time zone, format, set the time, sync with your computer, and then sync camera time. Next is daylight savings, on or off. Set all that good stuff. Holiday, security, ooh. Uh, IP filtering, HTTPS, OnVIF authentication, Telnet, ARP protection, watermark, and password mode. Next tab is the camera tab. We'll start at the top still. So this is where you'll add the cameras. As you can see, we have the fisheye and the PTZ, and then our doorbell at the bottom here using the OnVIF protocol. Let's go on the advanced tab here. Looks like you can upgrade the camera through the NVR, so that's an awesome feature to have for sure. So the next tab is the OSD settings. So this will be, you can put the, the timestamp camera name on the camera's live view, so that's nice too. Content. Okay, looks like you can add additional labeling to the live view. Next is the image tab. Um, this is where you can adjust um, the, the image of the camera. You can brightness, saturation, contrast. Uh, looks like exposure, smart illumination, white balance, and then there's advanced. Looks like defog. And then I thought this was pretty neat. Up in the image scene, you can change it um, from indoor, starlight, or WDR. Um, looks like you have to reboot the camera whenever you select that. All right, so the next is schedule. So there's the recording schedule. Looks like right now it's set to 24-7, uh, all day, every day recording. Um, camera, pre-record, post-record, redundant recording, and then you can actually turn the recording schedule on or off. Um, snapshot schedule, they'll save snapshots throughout the day. Um, next we have the motion, so it looks like you get the basic grid and it tells you when um, something triggers the grid. Uh, sensitivity, draw area, turn it on or off. Arming schedule, trigger actions, you can do a buzzer, send email, initiate the alarm outputs, record certain channels, and then trigger a snapshot. And it looks like you can also trigger a PTZ preset as well. Next is video loss. Um, so if a, a camera loses video, it'll trigger the event within the, the time frame if it's turned on. And you can do the same trigger actions as motion. After that, tampering. Looks like about the same settings as the other events. Privacy mask. So if you don't want to catch someone's backyard, you can draw a nice little gray square. And boom, you don't have to see anyone's backyard or dogs running around. Snapshot, looks like you can adjust the resolution, quality, intervals of the snapshots. Human body detection. So I'm unsure if this camera supports that, but it's definitely an option here. VCA, looks like there's face detection, intrusion detection, cross line detection, audio detection, people counting, defocus detection, scene change detection, auto tracking, object left behind, and object removal. And then in the next tab we have the hard disk, which that shows the storage. There's a two terabyte drive in here. Disk group, um, hmm, not sure what that is. I guess you can assign drives to, to do specific things allocated space and then advanced looks like a, you can set it to overwrite when it's full or just stop recording in general next is the alarm tab looks like the alarm inputs and outputs manual alarm and then you can um, set how the buzzer works within the within the recorder
Now we have the alert tab. Um, looks like much like the exceptions for the H series. Uh, if there's an IP conflict, the hard drive goes abnormal, um, things like that. You can have the buzzer go off or it, it can shoot you an email or it can activate one of the alarm out outputs. So if you have say like a strobe light, I'm not sure why you would want that, but you can do it. The next tab is the network section. So you can program the IP address and do the DNS servers, the internal NIC of the NVR. Typically we don't touch that, but it's there. After that, PPOE, Easy Cloud. So here um, within the app on your phone, you will go onto this tab on the, on the computer here, open up your app, scan that QR code, and then boom, the, the cameras will come up. You obviously have to turn this on, but it's that simple with the Uniview products, which that is super nice. It, it's pretty similar to the, the R series that we have. So it, it kind of seems like the Uniview products are like a mix between R series and H series, which uh, you get the best of both worlds. Next tab, DDNS port. You can modify your HTTP port, HTTPS port, RTSP port, port mapping. Looks like this is enabled. Typically we will keep that off. So I'll go ahead and do that. Email settings, multicast, and then FTP. Next tab is all right, so it looks like the platform tab isn't doing anything. So we'll move on to the next tab, the user tab. So you can create a new users or adjust the admin password if you need to. Then you get the maintenance tab, which that shows you your logs, hard drive information, how many users you have logged into it online, so remotely or, or even locally on a different PC. Network info, looks like you can track the actual data usage, which that is really cool. Net detect. Not sure what that does. It looks like you can test your the, the internal NIC of the recorder, so just to see if it's bad or not. Network, this looks like it just lists all of your network info. PoE port status, so that it looks like it, it, sh it shows your um, how much power is available through the PoE ports on the internal switch of the NVR and which ports are being used, so that, that's super nice too. Network statistics, looks like this shows you the, the amount of camera throughput remote live view throughput. So this is this is really neat too. Next tab, camera tab. It shows you which cameras are online or which channels are online and then what features that they support. So motion, tampering, video loss. So that is super neat. Next tab is recording. So it shows you which cameras are recording and what they are recording. So status, ongoing, Diagnosis, normal, stream type, mainstream, FPS, bitrate, resolution, really neat. And last but not least, uh, you got your maintenance tab, which you can restart default, factory default, export a config file, and check by cloud. I would assume that's for a firmware. And then the client log, auto restart, and then you have a, a diagnosis info tab. So yeah, there you have it. That's the web interface to our new Uniview NVRs. And you got to see a first look of a couple of the new cameras we brought in as well. And as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a chat or an email. Have a good one.